What's up guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ayana. I run a candle business by the name of So Yaya. And if you are returning, what's up bestie? You guys, I know you've been waiting for me to do this video. Ayana, how in the world do you find out what wick you wanna use for your jar? And I promise you guys, I was coming with the video. Y'all, editing content and recording content and all those things is so hard. But I promise you guys, I'm gonna try to continue to do the best that I can. So with that being said, in today's video, we're gonna talk all about wigs and you guys it's been a little minute before I had to do search on how to go about choosing the jar the wig and all those things for my candles so I had to go back and do a little bit of research and make sure that my notes were constructed right for you guys so that I'm not getting too far off topic we're gonna talk about how I go about choosing the wigs for my jars and then I'm also gonna give you guys a little bit of background of the different type of wigs that there are because I think that is important to know so you have your LX wigs you have eco wigs and then you also have our cd wigs and cdn wigs and it is important to know the differences of the wigs because that is going to be how you're going to determine what wigs are going to be best for the candles that you're making so ll wigs are going to be designed to improve the burning of solid scented solid colored votives and container and pillar candles and then you have your eco wigs which are Typically, they work best in soy waxes and lower melt point uh, peripheral waxes. And then now you have your CD wigs, which is designed to ensure a consistent burn with a higher fragrance load, especially with softer, more viscous natural waxes. I started off using CD wigs, but then now I use CDN wigs. CD wigs are going to be more for your softer waxes. I use coconut soy wax, which is a very soft wax. So that is why I went with that. So it is important to know what type of wax you are using. It is important to know the fragrance oil you're using. It is important to know the type of jar that you're using because all that is going to play a role into how you're going to go about choosing this wick that you're going to be using. It's also important to know that candle dye also plays a roll into that as well. This is my most popular jar, the 18 ounce Sydney jar. I double wick all of these jars. So how I decided that I was gonna be double wicking my jars is purchase your candles from the different manufacturers, your vendor or whatever. Usually they will give you a guide and that guide is gonna tell you, okay, this is the diameter of your jar and we suggest or recommend that you use this size wick. So what I like to do is when, if they don't give me that or whatever, I know that I can go to pretty much any candle company and look on finding their wicking guide and I can get my own little measuring tape and what I will do is measuring the diameter which is straight across and of course you're gonna have it better than I do you're gonna stick it there and it can be a little tricky obviously you guys use a ruler if you have a ruler I cannot find a ruler my measuring tape works perfectly for me because I'm always measuring something different around the studio so get you a measuring tape or get you a ruler so that you can always measure the diameter because that is going to be your deciding factor of the wick size that you're going to be choosing when you are testing out your different jars and you're like okay well why am I using different size wicks for literally the same jar the same wax I'm using the same color dye if any why am I having to switch up the sizing wick when you are conducting your burn test you want to get three different size wicks and then you also want to make sure you're using the same jar the same fragrance oil the same wax and make sure that you're doing everything the same the only different variation that you're going to have is a different size wick and that way you can determine okay this wick is too small this wick needs to i need to wick up or this is causing mushrooming or this one is not getting a full melt pool or the melting pool is literally larger than a quarter of an inch or something like that so always make sure do at least five to six different test burns and until your candle is either completely burned or at least goes to about half. Um, when I first started out, I needed to see what the candle did completely. So I made sure every single candle was burnt out completely before I moved on to whatever the next step of testing was gonna be for me. But I know some people who would just do their four hour burn test and they're like, okay, that's good. I saw what the wick was doing and then they're done with it. I just like to double and triple track, especially when this is something that I'm gonna be giving to different customers. So always make sure that you are testing 
testing everything the same so that you can get a accurate reading. Always best to let your candles cure, you guys. Um, for me, coconut soy, curing those 14 days is always going to be it. Trust me, I've tried ways around it. And as I got better with candle making and started, you know, playing around with different temperatures, I noticed that I can sometimes burn a candle a little bit before the 14 days, but I like to just make sure if these are something that I'm going to be selling to customers, then I want to make sure that the customer gets a really good hot throw. And hot throw just means that they can smell that candle. Make sure you are looking up what the best cure time is for the wax that you are using. I know you guys have wanting to know what wicks I'm using so we're just gonna go through all of them so for my 22 ounce candle jar I three wick them because the diameter and size and so these are three wicked and I use three CDN wicks and trust me I've tested out different things if you use any of these candle jars and you use different wicks and they work for you don't be afraid to put that down in the comment section below because I tell people all the time like candle making is just such it's just so many different variations variations that can be right like there's really just no wrong and right way um sometimes so if you use these candle jars and you're like no girl i use this size and it works best for me don't be afraid to share that in the comment section because that can help out others as well um, okay this is a 9.5 ounce jar and i fill it to eight ounces and i use a one single six inch or seven inch wick this is the 14 ounce havana jars that are probably the most popular across the board and i single wick these as well and i use a cdn 12 and i know you're like what yes so i use a cdn 12 for this one so this is the 18 ounce and i double wick these and i use either a four or five inch always let your candles do their full burn time to the three to four hours depending on the diameter of the candle a two inch candle should reach a full melt pool around the two hour mark and then you have your three inch candle which should reach a full melt pool around the three to four hour mark and then so on always visually inspect the details of your candle before you burn it out because you want to make sure okay is it re reaching a full melt pool and I want you guys to understand that when it comes to the melt pool, sometimes depending on the wax that you're using, you don't need to necessarily reach a full melt pool. For customers, I like to tell them that just because, and I'm not there to inspect the candle, right? So I don't know if they're trimming their wick as they should. The customer don't let it reach a full melt pool, then on that next burn, it's more than likely going to reach that. And that's why I love coconut soy wax. If you don't reach your first melt pool around on the first burn, then you're nine times out of 10, you're gonna to get it the second time around but i did want to show you guys there are instances where coconut soy wax have tunnel and that is because i was using a wig that wasn't big enough so i did want to show you guys that 14 ounce havana jar wick was way too small into mushroom this candle was just like a no-go it smells it smells divine don't get me wrong oh but it's gonna be a waste of a candle because it was gonna end up burning all the way down and the outsides were still gonna be there and that's a waste of a candle right it, that just means that I needed to wake up and I believe I was using the CDN 8s on that one and that's how I determined to go to the 12 I went up to 10 and I went to 12 so it's just all about testing you have to just test 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 because a lot of times you'll think well she used um a cdn 12 and it worked for her we all use different fragrance low percentages we use different fragrances we use different waxes so not all the time you're going to get the same results as someone else so that is something to always take into account when you're watching different videos for different resources try to watch people's videos that are geared to the same type of um wax and candle vessels that you are using. Inspect your candles again because you want to make sure, okay, what is each candle doing? So like I said, when you're doing your test burn, I decided that CD wicks is going to be the wicks that I'm gonna be using. So now I'm gonna get my fragrance oil. I'm gonna choose my percentage load. It's always best to start at a lower percentage load and then work your way up because if you start off too high, you won't understand what went wrong. A lot of times we think if we use a 
high percentage low, then that is giving us a great hot throw and that's not always the case. A lot of times you're gonna notice that I can use a 6% fragrance load with the right wick and then I can use a 10 to 12 percentage fragrance load with the wrong wick and this candle is gonna be the one that gives me the great hot throw and this one's not probably gonna smell like anything at all. So it is important to make sure you do your test. So start off with 6%. Um, I know with coconut soy wax, usually it's anywhere between eight and 12%. Why I say start off with 6% is because that when you're testing out, it's best to just start off at the lowest. So if you do one that's 6%, do one with 8% and then you know, do one with maybe nine or 10% like that. And then, I mean, if you want to do all of them and do maybe a seven, eight, nine, ten, and just see which one burns the best or whatever, you can do that as well. If you're doing your test burn for your different wigs. Make sure that you're using the same fragrance oil percentage across the board because you don't want to like throw off your test. And why you need to make sure that you're visually inspecting your candle is because you just need to make sure there's no carbon buildup, there's no mushrooming, and then there's no soot to make sure that the flame is steady and that it's not doing a lot of dancing around. Um, when you have a dancing flame, your candle is burning too hot and you need to wick down and see how that one's going to perform. Um, if your wick is too small, then you're gonna get that tunneling. Like I just showed you guys, that wick was way too small and I had to wick up. It comes to wicking, you guys, it's really, it's just a lot. Um, this is probably one of the most toughest parts. A lot of times people don't realize that your fragrance oil can be clogged by the wig. Sometimes when you're not getting that good hot throw, it doesn't necessarily mean that you wick wrong. It just can mean that you put way too much fragrance oil and you've now clogged the wig. So it's just so many different variations that go into candle making. Um, I hope that I answered a lot of the questions that you guys did have. I know you guys just kind of wanted to know what type of wigs I was using for my candle jars. And so I did show you guys that. So if you have any additional questions, don't be afraid to ask them down in the comment section below. I will see you in the next video. Bye.